Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we saw how we can use the row echelon form of the matrix to easily find the values for x, y, and z for our three equations and three unknown problem, a system of linear equations and three variables. But after you're already this far, this is where we left off last time, and then we said, well, z is equal to 1, and then we went backwards and found the values for y and x, we can actually continue reducing the row echelon form all the way until we have this form. So that means ones across diagonals and zeros everywhere else. When we do that, notice that this is the z column, that's the y column, that's the x column. Here we can clearly see that z is equal to c, y is equal to b, and x is equal to a. So that makes it really easy to pick out the solution for our system of linear equations. So we just have to go a little bit further. Sometimes it's a lot of work, especially when things get very gnarly, when we get decimals and fractions, but in this case it's probably not going to be too bad. So the next thing we want to do is notice we want to go one column at a time. We want to turn this into a zero. And we can do that by simply adding row 2 to row 1. So we're going to replace row 1, and that's how we write that. We're going to take row 1 and replace it by simply the sum of row 2 and row 1. Because when I add these two together, I get 0, and that's what I'm trying to get. I want to turn that into a 0. So if we do that, we get the following. So let's write down the new matrix. So row 2 and 3 do not change, so I get a 0, a 1, minus 13 over 4, minus 21 over 4, I get a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 0. Here I end up with a 1, but now this wants to become a 0. It doesn't want to become, we want to make it into a 0. So add these two together, we get 0. So what happens when we add these two together? Well, 4 is like 16 over 4, minus 13 over 4, that would be 3 over 4. So I end up with 3 over 4 here. And here when we add these two together, 9 is the same as 36 over 4, so let me show that 9 would be the same as 36 over 4, and then add a negative 24 out of 4, so 36 minus 21, that's 15 out of 4, or uh, over 4, so that means that this is going to become 15 divided by 4. Okay, we're almost there. The next thing we want to do is turn these two into zero. So I want this to become a zero, and I want this to become a zero. And row three is the one that has the one in it. So this is how we do that. We're going to take row one and replace it with the negative of this number multiplied times row three. So minus three quarters times row three added to row one. And for row two, we're going to replace that by the negative of that number, which is a positive 13 over four times row three. So 13 13 over 4 times row 3, and add it to row 2. And that will turn these two things into a 0, and then we're done. Okay, let's see what that looks like. What is not changing is the bottom row, 0, 0, 1, and that's a 0. Was that a 0? I'm missing something. No, it should be a 1. Got to be careful. It's so easy to make mistakes. So that, of course, that had to be the 1 over here. Okay. So, negative 3 quarters times uh, row 3. Well, first of all, these are not going to change anymore, so I can go ahead and plug these in like this, but I'm worried about those two right there. So, negative 3 quarters times that added to this becomes a 0. Negative 3 quarters times this added to 15 over 3. So, that's negative 3 quarters plus 15 over 4. That's minus 3 plus 15, that would be equal to 12 over 4, which is equal to 3. So, when I take negative 3 quarters of this number, add it to this number, I end up with a 3. Now, for the second row, I take the positive 13 over 4 times row 3, and add it to this, I get 0. And a positive 13 over 4 times this, and add it to that. So, I end up with 13 over 4 times 1. And I'm going to add that to negative 21 over 4, which is equal to minus 8 over 4, which is equal to minus 2. So that means that this becomes a minus 2. And now I have it in the reduced row echelon form, once across diagonals, zero everywhere else. This is the x, the y, and the z column. 
So I could simply read that x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 2, and z is equal to 1. And there you go. That's the solution to our system of linear equations. Again, the same three results that we got in the previous examples of all the various methods of how to do that. But notice that once you have it in the reduced to row echelon form, you just read the results right there in the right side of that matrix. And that is how that's done. Just have to read it. Just have to get there. Take it right off. <laughs> Forget all the work because after all, yes, we started here, but normally you'd have to do all the first steps first before you can go ahead and get all the way to this form. So yes, it is kind of a lengthy process. And um, it's again, it's a good method if you like to use computers, if you like to use Excel spreadsheets, it's a wonderful method to do that, but uh, it does take a bit of work. And it's easy to make a mistake. I almost made one. Well, I caught it, luckily. <laughs>